Well, it seems like we've had major wildfires here in Southern California every year, but a new report from UCLA predicts things will only get worse. Yeah, it says the number of days with a high risk of fire could double by the end of the century. And here to talk with us about this is Professor Glenn McDonald, a UCLA climate scientist who is involved in the study. Thank you so much for being here with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, Northern California usually sees more acres burn from mm -hmm. wildfires, but your report found Southern California could catch up. Why is that? Well, we were only looking at coastal Southern California, so about 41,000 square kilometers. So we're never going to kind of catch up with all of Southern uh, Northern California in terms of total area. But we could see more and more potential days where we get large wildfires. And for our definition, that would be wildfires of roughly uh, 100 acres or greater. So we could see more frequency of these fires, although we may not get anything quite as big as some of those huge ones that we get in northwestern California or the Sierra. And no matter whether it's along the coast, Professor, or inland, of course, we see these fires. Now, your study looked at which climate factors have the biggest impact on wildfires. Which ones did you find matter the most for us here in SoCal? We looked at uh, climate and we looked at fuel conditions, which are, in a sense, you know, prompted by climatic conditions. And what we found was a really strong climatic control was something called vapor pressure deficit. And it's, it's basically hot, dry air. And as you get that hot, dry air, it dries out the fuels. And then we found that that then promotes uh, ease of ignition of the fuels, hotter burns, and, uh, and basically drier fuels. And so it's a bad combination. As temperatures go up, the vapor pressure deficit gets worse, fuels get drier, and we get more and more days when they come together and give us the potential for having a large fire. Yeah, when the Santa Ana winds blow, I'm sure it also uh, doesn't help. It certainly doesn't. And that's one mm -hmm. thing we didn't look at in the study was any you know, predictions of frequency of Santa Ana wind days. However, as we know, living here in SoCal, we get more Santa Ana's as we get into the fall and mm -hmm. the early winter. And our study suggests we're going to be getting more of those hot, dry air, large fire days uh, moving into the shoulder seasons, moving into fall, moving into spring. Of course, moving into fall and early winter, that's when they will combine with the Santa wow. Ana's. But Professor, why was it so important to do this study now? Well, that's a really good question because people ask, well, it's 2100, that's 80 years away. And we'll see basically these, this trend of increasing a large fire days building up over the 21st century. It's not going to suddenly happen at 2100, but it's giving us some time to start, let's say, planning. And the two things we can do is, of course, continue to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the state and globally, but we can also do local things, more fire hardening of our building and our construction, more defensible space around uh, structures, and maybe looking at our planning so we don't put development in the high fire risk areas. It's, it's kind of like telling us what the future could look like and, and giving us some um, incentive to tackle things now. And Professor, you, you sort of answered my next question, but I'm curious, are, is it too late? Can we really do these, can these changes really affect the future? Well, yes, I think they can. We looked at two different scenarios, a really high um, greenhouse gas emissions scenario and a more moderate scenario. And we see with the moderate scenario, you know, if we start getting on top of this, even if we don't do it perfectly, but we start decreasing those greenhouse gases, we will very significantly decrease the number of uh, large fire days in terms of weather and fuel conditions that we have as we move through the 21st century. So mitigating greenhouse gases now can cause, it can really uh, change things as we move into the 21st century. And then again, you know, local ordinances for building materials, defensible space, where we're going to build, where we're not going to build, those are things we can do today. And if we know that this fire risk is going to only increase as we move forward, it may give us more incentive to take those local and regional actions. All right, uh, Professor McDonald, thank you so much for joining us today. Always great uh, to get these um, occasional reminders of what we can do. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.